We had a part one, this is part two now, uh, phasers and phaser forms for vectors. Um, this was all covered in, in part one, and I don't uh, want to go into much detail, but basically what we're talking about is we can have a real vector, and this might be electric field E as a function of position and time, and we can write that as the real part of a phasor or a complex vector, which we show as this vector E with a sub P for representing the phasor form of the vector and an E to the I omega T. And the, this, this works for uh, sinusoidal conditions for any parameter, but the parameter usually exhibiting the sinusoidal conditions is, is time, and that's what we have here, E to the I omega T. But you could write it more general. This could be Q, and then this would be Q. And we showed that one of the advantages of, uh, of this uh, form is that if you take the partial with respect to time of this entire part, you wind up with I omega times that same part. So uh, it makes things a little s simpler. And, and we talked about uh, some examples of how the form of Maxwell's equations change in part one. Um, in part one, we started out with the real vector, the normal vector everybody uses. And we worked through and we found the phasor form for that real vector to be this complex vector. And what we want to do now is we want to start with this and find this. So using the expression here, we rewrite the vector that we're trying to find, the real vector, to be the real part of the imaginary vector. And what we have done is written the e to the i omega t that we have over here. So the real part of this should give us this, and now we're going to try to find this. So we can write this product over here is e to the i omega t minus kz times this complex vector. We can use Euler's formula, which we have over here, which we used in part one. We can use Euler's formula to write this as cosine omega t minus kz plus i sine omega t minus kz. So we have this term here multiplying this term here, and we're going to take the real part. So you can see when we multiply by the cosine omega t minus kz times the 100x, there's no i involved, there's no complex number, so the real part of that will give us uh, the 100 cosine omega t minus kz. When we multiply the cosine term times the coefficient for the y component, we'll have a complex number, so when we take the real part of that, that will go away. Now when we multiply with the next term here, the i sine of omega t minus kz times the x component, we're going to have an i. When we take the real part of that, it goes away. So that won't count. Now we look at multiplying this term times the y component. The i times the i will give us a minus 1. And we'll have the sine to omega t minus kzy from doing that multiplication. So you can see that we wind up with the 100 cosine omega t minus kz x component. And then just multiplying the minus 1 times the minus, we'll get plus 400 times the sine of the omega t minus kz y component. And if you take a look at this, it's precisely that. 
So again, in part one, we started with this real vector and found the phasor form, the complex vector of that phase of the real vector. In this second part, we started with this to find the real vector, and we found it like that.